Growing Up Herbal. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, then thank you for stopping by. And if you've been a viewer for a while, then I appreciate you guys coming back. In today's video, I am going to do a plant identification um, video on Clean Anne's Lace, which you can see here beside of me. Clean Anne's Lace is a very common herb here in Southern Appalachia. Uh, it grows all over the U.S. It likes poor sandy soil and it is actually a very useful herb. It's an herb I call an herb of antiquity. It was used a long time ago and it's not so much in common use today, but I think that since it's such a prolific herb and it seems to grow everywhere and it has a good amount of uses, I feel like it's one of those herbs we should bring back into modern herbal practice. But with that said, it is commonly mistaken for other herbs because there are a lot of flowering herbs with white lacy flowers. It can be commonly mistaken for yarrow, angelica, other herbs in the parsley, carrot family. Um, and it can be mistaken for deadly plants like poison hemlock and water hemlock and some uh, other plants like that. So today I want to take you up close and I want to show you some ways to positively identify Queen Anne's Lace, okay? Okay, so the first thing that you are going to notice is Queen Anne's Lace is a very tall plant. It grows off um, straight up from the ground and the stem branches off many different times. Um, and it's considered, it's actually categorized as an air plant. It's in the air element because it's tall and wispy and it bends and it's very flexible. Air plants are typically hairy and Queen Anne's Lace is hairy. That is one of the first identifying characteristics is um, this little story or this saying, the queen has hairy legs. So that's one way that you can remember Queen Anne's Lace. If you rub her stem, it feels very spiky and prickly and hairy. And so that's one of the identifying characteristics of this plant. Other plants like yarrow or any of the poison hemlocks, water hemlocks, their stems are smooth. They don't have little spiky hairs. Um, and another thing when you're looking at the stem is Queen Anne's Lace is typically all green. It doesn't have any other colored markings on the stem, but poison hemlock and water hemlock, they tend to have like purple spotting. Sometimes at the joints, which is where the stem branches off, there'll be a solid purple looking section or along the stem, you'll see purple splotches. So those are in a lot of the poisonous plants, but Queen Anne's Lace doesn't have that. She has hairy legs, folks. So her stem is real prickly and the other plants typically don't have that. So Queen Anne's Lace is named after Queen Anne, who was the wife of King James I, the guy who wrote the 1611 King James Bible, just for some historical fact for you guys. Um, and supposedly she was a very well-known lace maker. Um, I can't remember what that's called, tatting lace, I believe is what that's called, where you sew and you make lace. And um, there's a little saying, another little story to help you positively identify Queen Anne's Lace, which is flowers named after her, is that while she was tatting lace, she pricked her finger on a needle and left a drop of blood on the lace that she was making. So in a lot of Queen Anne's flowers, you'll see at the very center, there's like a purple or burgundy colored flower. So I'm going to go find one and I'm going to show you so you know exactly what I mean. There are none on this particular plant right here. All right, so here are a couple. So this one is very tiny, so I don't know if you guys can see it. Let me see. Can you all see the purple center to the flower? This one you can see it maybe a little better. Let's click the camera so you can focus there. If you guys see that, it's like a purple little center right there. And that is one way that can help you positively identify Queen Anne's Lace from other plants that look similar to it. Anyway, um, it's like yarrow, the poison hemlocks, water hemlocks, any of these, any of the deadly plants, they don't have that little purple flower in the center. Um, another fun little folklore fact that I just learned, because I didn't know this before, was that um, the old timers, people who used to use Queen Anne's Lace a lot, would say that if you use the purple 
burgundy piece in the center of the flower, if you collect a bunch of those and you use them, they can help ease epileptic seizures in people. So I don't know how true that is, but that is an old folk tale about Queen Anne's Lace, that the purple center is what is used for epileptic seizures. Okay, so we've talked about the queen has hairy legs. We've talked about her pricking her finger. Um, another thing that I wanted to talk about with identifying Queen Anne's Lace is the shape of the flower. So you can see that this flower, it's kind of shaped like an umbrella, right? Like it's kind of rounded, um, like an umbrella. And this is the sign of a newish flower. I'm not gonna say immature because this one right here, I would say would be immature, right? That little tiny thing. But this one is still a young flower because it's shaped like an umbrella. As the plant matures, then the flowers start to flatten out. So you can see with this one, let me grab all three of these so you can see them close up. And Queen, let me just also say, Queen Anne's Lace is considered to be kind of like an invasive plant, so you're not gonna be able to over harvest it. It spreads everywhere. Let me find another good one here. And let's see. This stem is super tough. It doesn't wanna come off here. Okay. All right, so take this one too. All right, so this is a baby flower, baby Queen Anne's Lace. You can see how little it is. The next stage would be this umbrella stage where it's kind of, kind of bent over like an umbrella, right? And then after the leaf or after the flower matures a little bit, it starts flattening out. Can you guys see a difference in those two? One is shaped like an umbrella and one is a little bit flatter. So as the uh, flower matures, it's gonna flatten out like this. This is usually when you'll see the purple center appear. And then as the flower ages, it'll start folding up and in on itself because it's trying to prepare seeds. So if you look at the inside of this, I'm not shaking too much, Let's see. If you look at the inside of that, you'll see that there are a bunch of little seeds starting to form in there and they're really green. But this is called a bird's nest flower. This one's probably a, a much older, and you can actually see the seeds forming in there. I don't know if you can see them. They're kind of starting to turn brown. Do you see that? And if you open it up, you can see a bunch of little seeds. I'm not sure if you guys can see that very well, but it's not ready yet, but they'll turn really dark and brown. And I'll show you an old one that's ready to harvest seeds in just a minute. But it goes through these stages from being very young. Let's see if I can put these in order. <laughs> can you guys see all of this? So this is kind of like the evolution of the flower. Really small, umbrella, flat, and then it's gonna fold up like a bird's nest on itself. One way to identify Queen Anne's Lace from other herbs with white flowers is this bird's nest feature. So another saying about Queen Anne is that in her old age, she became a bird watcher, which means old Queen Anne's flowers are gonna come, kind of be shaped like this bird's nest. Um, so the queen has hairy legs. She pricked her finger while tatting lace and left a drop of blood in the lace. And she became a bird watcher in her old age. So those are the three fun little sayings and stories about Queen Anne's lace that can help you to remember how to kind of positively identify this plant. Um, if you have questions, it's always a good idea to consult um, a plant identification book or bring someone who is very knowledgeable about correctly identifying Queen Anne's Lace. I'm gonna take you guys over and show you an old Queen Anne's Lace flower that's ready to harvest to get the seeds out of it and let you see what that looks like. And then I'm gonna show you some yarrow. So you can see how yarrow kind of looks similar to Queen Anne's Lace. But once you learn to positively identify this plant, you won't be confused the next time you see yarrow and Queen Anne's Lace near each other, okay? So let's go find an old flower. All right, so right here, you can see these old bird nest shaped Queen Anne's Lace flowers are quite brown. That means they are ready for their seeds to be harvested. I'm just gonna pick one off of here. I'll probably harvest seeds later. Um, speaking of old folk tales, there's actually a saying that the seeds are ready to be harvested from Queen Anne's Lace on the first windy day closest to the full moon. 
so it's close to the full moon and today hasn't been windy but the other day was so it's probably a good day to harvest the seeds so here is a tiny Queen Anne's lace seed not sure if you guys can see that you see it it's tiny the camera it may be blurry and you may not be able to see it very well but you harvest a bunch of these they've got like a prickly little kind of prickly little covering on them and you can kind of rub that covering off and then there's a brown seed inside of there so let's see if I can get it off it's starting to rain on me out here yeah so it's kind of like this tiny little tiny little seed Queen Anne's lace has a lot of different uses um, mostly for the urinary system it's very much a diuretic and it helps to flush things out of the body um, it's stimulating and pungent. You can use the seeds in your food for like a light peppery flavor. And it also stimulates the cardiovascular system. Um, it can help bring on menses that's delayed. So it's an amenagogue herb. It's commonly used for that. Um, let's see what else. It's an endocrine stimulant. So it can stimulate sex hormones, your thyroid hormone, um, different things like that. Some old folk uh, folk uses are bringing on breast milk production um, in nursing women. The seeds, when used a particular way, have been used as an herbal contraceptive. Um, there's, you know, mixed results with that, but it is done, especially here in Appalachia. That's very common here. Um, okay, so let me show you the leaves of Queen Anne's Lace, and then I'll show you some yarrow leaves right next to them so you can see the difference. Okay, so I flipped the camera around here and I want to show you this right here is a first year Queen Anne's Lace plant. You can see that it's growing straight out of the ground. Uh, so Queen Anne's Lace is a biennial herb, which means it takes two years to reach full mature size. This is a first year plant. It's got the stem growing up and we have leaves and it's really trying to establish its root system this year. The following year it will grow up taller and produce flowers and seeds it'll be a full-size plant and then it will die and that'll be it for the plant two years now you can see right here we have the queen anne's um parsley shaped leaves these are common in parsley family plants these leaves contain a chemical that can irritate some people's skin it can cause like contact dermatitis and also a photosensitivity after it's been on your skin like if you rub it and then your skin can get burnt easily so you've got to be careful with the fresh plant um, it only happens with certain people. Not everybody gets that. But anyway, so here is, are the Queen Anne's lace leaves, and right over here are Yara leaves. Can you see them? They're much darker. Even the mature Queen Anne's plants, their leaves are still lighter in color than yarrow. Yarrow is like a dark green, and yarrow is a completely different plant family, but you can see the leaves are much more fine looking. They're more feathery compared to Queen Anne's leaves. Her, her leaves are flat. They feel flat when you rub them. And then these feel like a feather, sort of. Yeah, so. So this is yarrow. You can see how it has white flowers and they're bunched together, just like the Queen Anne's Lace right over there. So yeah, you can see how that could be easy to mistake, right? You're looking here at yarrow and Queen Anne's Lace. And they both kind of look similar unless you know what you're looking for. So if we come over here to the yarrow, and if I fill the stem, it's smooth. There's nothing hairy on it. I can notice that the leaves are different. The flowers even look a bit different. Let's see if I can focus on those. And there is no purple or burgundy spot in those flowers. So let me hold this Queen Anne's lace close to this, and you can see the difference there. Let's see if my camera will focus. So there's yarrow and there's Queen Anne's lace. Quite a difference when you're up close like that, right? Okay, so I just pulled out this big Queen Anne's lace plant out of the ground just so you could see the root. When you pull out one of the first year plants, the root's gonna be tiny. It's going to take a lot of them to make a decent meal with their root, if you're gonna eat it like you would a carrot. So it's kind of white, creamy looking, and it branches off with all these little rootlets. It's considered like a tap root because it grows straight down in the ground. 
and it smells very much like a carrot. I actually read that if you have cultivated carrots in your garden, and let's just say you forget the garden, you don't do anything more with it, it will eventually, after like, I wanna say I read two or three years, it will convert back to a wild carrot. Um, I'm not sure if that's true. That may be a old folktale too, but I did read that, so I thought that was kind of interesting. Getting stuck on everything. Um, so another way to identify Queen Anne's lace from other lookalikes, especially poisonous ones, is that Queen Anne's lace smells like a carrot, and the poisonous varieties, poison hemlock, water hemlock, they stink. Like they don't smell good. They don't have this carrot smell. Right, this carrot is probably not edible. It's probably quite tough and fibrous. Um, you can use the root, you can use the flower, you can use the leaves, and you can use the seeds of Queen Anne's lace. The root and the leaves and the flowers and the seeds are often used for the urinary, uh, the urinary wellness benefits that we talked about earlier. Um, the seeds are gonna be the strong, strongest and the root's gonna be the strongest. That's true for most herbs. The leaves and the flowers typically are not as strong as the harder parts of the plant, uh, like your roots and your seeds. And the root can be graded and used. It kind of has like emollient or softening properties. It can be used on skin wounds. Uh, there are some references to the leaves being soaked in honey and those used on wounds because as you know honey is antibacterial it's great for wounds so these leaves can also be useful for that um, yeah so your urinary uses and your wound uses the root is good for that and the leaves as well now the flowers and the seeds have a high volatile oil content that's what gives them their like pungent peppery flavor, all of that oil in there. And there's actually an essential oil created, uh, wild carrot essential oil from the seeds of the plant. And that's often used in skincare and then that's also used for digestion. So your seeds, because they have all of that volatile oil in there, they're gonna be really great for digestion. They're considered a carminative, so they'll help with um, GI upset, gas, bloating, things like that. They help, um, when I think about plants with like pungent aromatics, especially your air element plants, I always think that they push the energy in the body up and out. They bring things to the surface. So when it comes to um, like your urinary tract uses, it's going to stimulate urine output. It's going to cleanse and push toxins out of your body, right? Same thing with your cardiovascular system. It's gonna speed up blood flow, blood flow to the brain, blood flow to the reproductive organs to help stimulate menses that's not happening, um, blood flow to all your endocrine organs. So it's just really uh, pushing that up and out. There um, also with the, the high volatile oil content, Queen Anne's lace can be used for um, like the respiratory system. If you have like a nasty chest cold and you have a cough, the volatile oils are like a stimulating expectorant, so they're really good and helpful if you've got a lot of yuck in your chest. Um, they're also gonna be antiseptic because most volatile oils have antiseptic properties, so that's gonna give them um, some good use on your wound and skincare issues. Or gastrointestinal ulcers, that's also a common use for Queen Anne's Lace. Again, a GI uh, digestive uh, system focus there. Um, trying to think of some other things that you can use it for. I know some people with low functioning thyroid have had benefits from using Queen Anne's lace seed. Again, um, it's the pungent dispersive of rom or, uh, aromatic qualities that help uh, stimulate the endocrine organs. Okay, so I hope you have enjoyed this video on how to identify Queen Anne's lace and some ways to use it and some fun folklore about the plant. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment below with something new that you learned or if you know something that I didn't mention in this video about Queen Anne's Lace, I'd love that if you shared that with me in a comment um, because I'm always looking to learn more as well. And if you have any suggestions on any other herb uh, identification or herb walk videos that you would like, leave those suggestions in the comments below. I'm always open to hearing what you guys want and what you're thinking. Um, so again, I'm Megan from Growing Up Herbal. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and stay tuned for more herbal identification videos.
Have a good day. Bye.